I joined the Shah as an apprentice in 1986. And at that time, of course, there was the main building, uh, so the production centre that we're sitting in now was not even there. We, we, we would have been sitting in a bus parking lot. So it was just the one building. We were uh, building our sets in behind the stage. The props were built in this building as well. Um, it was uh, a much different building physically. We had the Royal George by then because we acquired it in 1980. Christopher Newton was, you know, six years into his tenure by then as artistic director, so a lot of the tumultuous uh, relationship he had with the board and with the town was, you know, pretty much smoothed out, although there were a few instances here and there, but for the most part, people were getting along famously by then. And uh, it was a relatively small company uh, then. Uh, in the late 80s, we'd just done our production of Cavalcade, which was, was a, a big big production in a lot of ways. Physically it was big, but it was an important one. This particular Noel Coward play had not been done for a long, long time. And so it really did kind of help cement the Shaw's place on the world stage, which then meant that more attention was being paid to the Shaw by New York theatre critics, theatre critics from Boston and Chicago, and of course there were many more newspapers back then to pay attention to us as well. So that's a little different than it is nowadays. But um, people really started to pay attention to this Shaw Festival and, and Christopher's work. You know, the, the structure of how things went here was slightly different in the sense that the marketing department was very large, front of house reported to marketing, box office reported to marketing. Um, now, of course, it's a completely different setup, but that's the way it was back then. We had um, extraordinary designers uh, like Jeffrey Dallas, who was a maverick in lighting design in this country, and he was the head of our lighting design department. Um, the 80s also saw us lose a lot of theater artists. Um, the AIDS epidemic hit the arts industry very hard and very deeply, and um, our executive producer, uh, Paul Reynolds was was one of those people that we lost as a result. Jeffrey Dallas was another one, and and the list goes on and on of actors and designers and directors that that the industry lost and that the Shaw Festival lost. So it was a difficult time internally, because this is a kind of industry where you don't just work with people, you work for people. You work up your work is about people, and you get to know everybody. And it is like a family here, and there are a lot of people who take issue with that because they don't like that notion of family, And but it is here at the Shaw Festival a family. It can be a very dysfunctional family at times, but it's a family nevertheless. And when we lose anybody, we, we are cut deeply by it. And certainly in the 80s, uh, around 1986, 87, when we were losing a lot of people uh, to this terrible disease, and so much was unknown about it too. It was a very polarizing disease because there was so much unknown about it. It was a very difficult time for a lot of people here at the Shaw and, and, and cut us deeply to the core. Um, but as theatre practitioners do, we, we rise above and we move on and we persevere and we forge ahead and I think we were doing some of our most extraordinary work at that time and, and we continue to do extraordinary work. But you know, the Shaw has grown quite a bit. 